Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and when you think of 1950s Halloween costume, what comes to mind? Is it this and possibly this? Um, if that's what you think of, especially poodle motif, then that's exactly how I feel and that's exactly what I think of. And the thing is, Poodles were a pretty big thing in decorative motif back then, and I really want to incorporate these poodles into a dress, specifically because I purchased some earrings from a small creator, um, Kitchblade, over on Instagram, and I'll pop in a photo of the earrings, and as soon as I saw them, I was like, I want to make a matching outfit, and so now I need to tackle making a poodle-related garment without it looking like a Party City Halloween costume. So that is what I'm gonna do today using a pattern that I have already made here on this channel. So it's gonna be more of a chatty video as opposed to an in-depth sewing video because I've already done one for this particular pattern which I will have linked. So thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. I hope you do enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and now let's get into it. For the pattern, I'll be using Simplicity 4565 in a size 10 bust 31. We're going to go with view two with the soft pleated skirt option, as opposed to view one that has the pleats going all the way down to the hem and a matching jacket. For the fabric, we're going simple, casual. It is a red 100% cotton. Starting off with the bodice, I start stitching my poodle on. I'm going with a dark brown for the main body of the dog, and then I go with a pink color for the fluffy poodle hairstyle that is so iconic to a manicured poodle. The pink hair will be fringe-like, similar to the Santa apron that I made a few months back. And now it's time to start adding the darts to the bodice. I had it in my mind that I was going to be working on two dresses this week because I wanted to do another simple shirtwaist dress. So um, I started doing all of the darts on all of the pieces so that way I could take everything over to the sewing machine and do everything at once. I was sadly mistaken for this week because things just kind of dragged on. My husband ended up going on an unplanned work trip. So then that pushed all of my sewing and all of my everything behind and I just had to prioritize what I could so needless to say I did not finish this dress on time and I definitely didn't start a second. Another lovely creator here on YouTube as well as Instagram, Drew, I will link her channel. Uh, she mentioned in one of her recent videos that everything has been gray and it's been messing with her productivity and I can relate completely this week was difficult not only because my husband left for a business trip, which I am used to and I'm able to work through, but also the really gray weather, it's too cold, it's raining, and that compiled with just trying to get my schedule back after the holidays, it was just too much. So I do feel like I could have at least gotten this dress done last week, but I spent a lot of time just sitting around and trying to gather myself and prepare for the following day. So I didn't do nearly as much sewing, especially on a piece that I've already made before. Usually I can sew these up even faster than the first time. And the first time only took me a couple days. So I could have realistically done this in two days or even one. I want to talk about why I decided to make this dress again. I do repeat my patterns quite often, but I don't usually film them more than once. And so I decided to go with this one because I found myself wearing the first one so much and I could use more shirtwaist dresses. I feel like they are easy to dress up and dress down. And because they're cotton, they're easy to throw in the wash. And I really like that. And I know that's why I've been wearing the first one that I made so often. Another big plus for me was that I didn't need to buy any zippers. I have got to restock on zippers and I'm just not in the mood to go shopping. I don't want to order online and I don't feel like going to a store. So I looked around and I knew I wanted to work on something. Working on things really helps clear my mind and it's how I relax. So I knew I wanted to work on a project, but I knew that I was limited to the supplies I had on hand. And I remembered that this dress doesn't require any kind of zippers. So all I needed was four matching buttons, a hook and eye, and then some snaps, and that would be enough. So that's the main reason I went with this dress on top of it fitting well. So yeah, I thought it would be just perfect for the moment. 
Also, this is probably still a palette cleanser to me because I want more than anything to make a suit. And I have the supplies to make a suit, but I feel like because I just recently made a winter coat and then before that I made a coat for my daughter and then I made the swing coat before that, I just feel like I'm all like big project out right now and I really need that instant gratification. So even though I wanted to sew this up really quickly, I took the time to do French seams on the entire project except for the waist seam, which I did cover with bias tape instead. So the inside is just as beautiful as the outside and that's the type of construction I love on my cotton dresses because I know it would withstand a lot of washing and a lot of wears. Just a reminder, I did make this dress already in another video and I'm going to put that in the icon where I talk more about the sewing process instead of it being a chatty video. Right now I am easing the um, sleeves in and I'm pretty much finishing up the French seam on the sleeve. You're going to want to take your time with this because you have to ease the sleeve in. It can be really easy to like sew a pleat or a wrinkle an unintentional wrinkle into the seam so you're gonna want to basically when I like to ease the sleeve in I don't go with the longest stitch I just go with the the longest stitch that will allow me to still gather um, so it's like the second to the longest stitch but after that then you put everything right side together and then you just finish up the bodice like you did everything else okay now it's time to decide what to do with the skirt I am not doing a circle skirt I feel like that is a very big waste of fabric right now and I don't have enough to do a full circle skirt anyway and I'm trying to stay away from the very costumey look of a poodle skirt so I felt like something gathered or pleated made more sense anyway I'm still on the fence at this point on whether or not I want to put a poodle at the bottom corner of the dress and I feel like because it isn't on a circle skirt and I can't put like a leash on it that it's won't look as costumey as if I did put a leash on it. At the point of this voiceover, I'm looking at it on the dress form and I feel like it would look cute with the poodle, but also I am content with it just being on the bodice. I cannot decide and it's definitely making this whole process longer than it should be. And on another topic, I feel like this video is so chatty and maybe I just need to get the words out of my head, but I feel like the more that I've developed my vintage style the less I like circle skirts which is the skirt that I pretty much idolized when I first started dressing vintage it was the skirt to have and I think even before I started dressing vintage it was my favorite style of skirt on modern dresses like the short skaters skirts so I feel like the more that I really get comfortable in my style and what I like and what I don't like the further away I get from the circle skirt. And I'm wondering how you guys feel in the vintage community. Beginners, are you drawn to the circle skirt? And those of you who have been doing this for a while, are you, uh, are you pulling away from it? I personally prefer a gathered skirt. And I used to hate the pleated skirts, but now I even like the pleated skirts more than I like circle skirts. I think it boiled down to the fact that one, I don't like the amount of fabric that the circle skirts um, take up. And because I mainly have like 45 inch wide material available to me, it's so much easier for me to make a gathered skirt than to spend the extra to make the circle skirt because I just don't buy fabric that's usually 60 inches wide. Second, I also like the shape of the gathered skirt. I like that there's more volume closer to the waist as well as the hem of the skirt as opposed to the circle skirt that kind of tapers out to the bottom i feel like it makes the waist waist and hip area a little too flat for me and of course you can like really fix that with a proper petticoat but i don't want to wear like a very heavy hoop skirt to hold it up and i feel like the volume in a gather skirt like the gather skirt itself has enough volume to support the shape as well as the petticoats that I have. We are now nearing the end of the project, so I am just setting in the pleats. If you haven't already, please consider liking this video to help push it through the algorithm. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like these. I'd truly appreciate it. If you'd like to support this channel any further, you could become a Patreon over on Patreon. You can become a bobbin where you can get exclusives. Also, you can leave me a virtual tip over on Ko-fi, but of course the best free way to support this channel is just to like, subscribe, share, and leave me a little comment below. 
I did decide to add that other poodle on the bottom of the skirt and then I wanted to adorn the poodle by adding little bows in the hair as well as the tail. So I cut a couple strips of thin ribbon and then I go and tie a knot which will be the knot of the bow. And now to turn it into a bow, I use a lighter to kind of melt the ends together. So I melt and pinch and then I melt and pinch the other side and then I just fold it back to where it looks like a bow and I secure it with a stitch to hold it in place and you will be able to see what it looks like on the poodle right here and look how cute that is and we're actually going to do a close-up when we get closer to the skirt but I did add two one on the tail and one on the head because I thought it would be super cute thank you so much for watching I am sorry that it's a little later than usual but let me know in the comment section below for you beginners what is your preferred skirt style? Is it the circle skirt? Do you like it gathered? And for those of you who have been dressing vintage for a while, how did you start off? What, did you like a circle skirt to begin with? Did you grow into a different favorite style? As I said earlier, mine used to be the circle skirt and I've since grown into a gathered skirt, but I look forward to reading what you guys like now. See you in the next one, bye.